I don't just make this shit up. <laughs> so, people today, the space community, remember the subtitle of the book that was not accepted by the publisher? Dreams and Delusions of Space Enthusiasts. Okay, so ready. So, people say, oh, we just need leaders who are charismatic, and like we had back in the 60s, and Bush what didn't have that charisma. Just needed a charisma, that's all. Excuse me. Excuse me. First of all, the half a trillion dollars over 30 years, okay? What's NASA's budget? It's $15 billion. Times 30 years, that's half a trillion dollars. So NASA's running budget over the time interval specified was already that much money. So to say we can't afford it because it's half a trillion dollars is just bullshit. Okay? It made a single day's headline because of half a trillion, who's going to agree to half a trillion dollars? That's a, that is a 30-year NASA budget is a half a trillion dollars. So that, that was not even an argument, but it worked, cult, it, worked, uh, it worked in the emotions of those who were making the decision. Fact one. Fact two. Why does it fall on deaf ears? Hmm. What else happened in 1989? I remember peace broke out right. in Europe. Holy shit, peace broke out. <laughs> Bad for the space program. Why? Because NASA was born out of a war climate. Let's not fool ourselves. Yes, it says a civilian agency. Yes, but all but two astronauts were drawn from the military. Okay? First time they sent a scientist, it was the last mission. All right? So, so be honest. This is the delusions that I'm trying to undo that pervade our entire community. So... We're at war in 1961 and 62. The Bay of Pigs, the, the Russia. Do you know that Sputnik wasn't just some vessel? It was a hollowed out intercontinental ballistic missile shell where they replaced it with a beeping radio transmitter. So, and, and they named it Sputnik, fellow traveler. Oh, isn't that nice? The military <laughs> knew that that was an ICBM shell. So of course we're gonna react exactly the way we did spooked us. So Kennedy, regardless of his charisma, was at war. And I spend a third of the book talking about the great drivers of expensive things that cultures have ever done. Number one on that list is war. Number two is economics. The promise of economic return. So I don't want to die, and I don't want to die poor, right? <laughs> third one, which is not common today, is people did things for kings and for gods. All right, so that's how you get the pyramids, very expensive, expensive tombstone, basically, for the pharaohs. Uh, the cathedral building in Europe, that's for, for God, okay, the Christian God. So you, you look at motivation to do really expensive, time-intensive, human capital-intensive activities. It is only drawn from those three forces. It has never been, oh, because we're explorers, <laughs> oh, because we want to learn science. Uh, no, that has never driven anything. Yeah, it'll do, do a low radar level. Well, okay. China's drive us into that. Okay, so, 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 wait, let me get back to why I disagree with you. Okay, so, Bush's problem was that peace broke out. Had we still been at war and there was some perceived threat, we'd be on Mars today. So it actually, I assert, had nothing to do with charisma or the absence thereof. It had to do simply, is the war driver there? Is the economic driver there? Are we doing it because we found the face of God on Mars? If none of those three drivers are there, we are not doing it. My read of 